the megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible, and innovant, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sith Kanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to do the good pleasure of the Lord of a God by having listening Isaiah 53 5 which teaches for us the chastisement of us upon the Lord would result for us the peace and it calls for us the chastisement is nothing but the Hebrew word Musar which is correction, discipline, or instruction, or in simple terms, doctrine, or reproof. That's what we say, Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Training in righteousness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The good pleasure, those who do his will, to them, Great peace, said the Lord. And those who do His will by constantly winning souls. The Hebrew word Lakak, what we read on behalf of Enoch and his walk towards the Lord. The Hebrew word says he was Lakak, seized off, taken, and being possessed as for a marriage. Here in Proverbs 11.30, we find the same word, Lakak, which has been so graciously used for us to understand the one who winneth souls is wise. Lakak in the sense over here, it teaches to us every word what you speak in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Whenever you open up your mouth in comparison to Colossians 4.6, being seasoned with salt, so that every word what we use and talk should be absolutely right in the sight of the Lord our God. Walking with wisdom among them who do not have wisdom by redeeming the time. Lakak meant to say to seize upon by your very word. And that very word not to put a use in them a fear that they should believe in Christ going against the privacy of the evolution. But explaining to them the way how Apostle Paul explained to King Agrippa in the terms pertaining to Felix when he heard about the judgment, says Acts 24 or 26 chapter, and the righteousness and of the future events that are going to take place. He trembled, says the world. We are not going against their evolution. But in return, we are training them up to understand if ever they don't give their time to the word of the Lord of our God, if ever they don't heed to the right principle of the truth behind this word. Because when the believers fail to do their work properly, then the unbelievers will not tremble at his word. 
and you as a believer cannot lack the souls of them cannot seize their souls and the way how you cannot seize their souls is purely because you haven't truly understood the real purpose of you being kept alive to be called these witnesses and that's what we need to look when paul preaches to king agrippa the things pertaining to the word of the lord of god when he heard those words he almost all was been persuaded to become a christian and this persuasion not so that he has to be into hell but rather to teach them the fearful judgment which is going to come when they would disobey this great truth so apostle paul being not disobedient to the heavenly vision witness the truth in every part of the world through the center called as rome and put in their mind what is it if they not believe the word of the lord of god the way how they would end up in the things pertaining to the temperance the judgment and the righteousness and we find in acts 24 25 teaching to us very specifically the importance of proverbs 11:30 in comparison to them who love to do the will of lord god the father for which cause they have been kept alive in witnessing this truth so we find dialogiomai which is to discourse with one another to argue to revolve in mind the things pertaining to number 1 the righteousness of the lord dikaiosume that's the difference between us and the unbelievers the righteousness what we have by faith alone in christ alone unbelievers seek to have that righteousness by their deeds by their good deeds by their good works the deeds which seem to them justifiable in the means of their own standards as a 64 teaches for us all those righteous deeds are ministros cloth fit for nothing the only standard of righteousness in the sight of the lord of a god is the work of his son on the cross so that we are being saved by grace through faith not of works lest any man should boast this righteousness the world is seeking and searching to gain the approbation of the lord of a god by doing the deeds of this flesh to be justifiable in their terms but it is no way possible for them to be justifiable because all our deeds what we do in the energy of the flesh will in return end up as minus r the book of works they will not lead you to the book of lamb of christ so the things why we are talking to do the good pleasure of his will so that we can have greater peace so that we can enjoy isaiah 53:5 the chastisement of our peace was upon him the hebrew word doesn't just mean chastisement but it means to be making them the disciples it is 
a correction which leads them for proper training in the word of the Lord our God. It's not just a corporal punishment. It's the oral Magad, what we are doing every day for you to come back and to put number one priority for the word of the Lord our God that can lead you to the theme for that God's discipline, which is nothing but to make you disciples. The same principle of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 8, in comparison to this chastisement which was upon him, so that we could truly wake up and understand the true work, the great work of the Lord our God being bestowed upon our shoulders. This Apostle Paul is reasoning with Felix. Number one, he's talking about the righteousness. The righteousness which could lead them to become to their own consciousness to understand that their good deeds are menstruous cloth. Because the absolute standards of his righteousness are always in holiness. He has designed us to survive in the environment called as holiness. He has made us in the image after his own which has been in accord with devotion to doctrine in the categories of truth. Not just the things pertaining to your evangelical work or your tithes or your giving. Because many of the people don't understand the difference between the tithes of the Old Testament and the difference between the tithes of the New Testament in accord with the tithe of the time that we need to pay to the church every day. Why you don't have peace? You search in peace. You don't understand that Christ, our Lord our God, has taken the chastisement for our peace. The discipline for our peace so that we could become the disciples of his word. You truly never understand what is the peace being hidden for us. Those who do the good pleasure of his will. Luke 2, 14, the greatest salutation of all time. The unique salutation of all time. The unique verse of all time. The entire angelic host standing in array to salute the Lord of our God for his presence on this earth being born. And giving the salutation to this mankind, glory to the Lord of our God, to the highest. Peace be unto the mankind on this earth. And greater peace to them who do the good will of the Lord of our God. Peace because we are believing in Christ. And greater peace, the peace which the world cannot pay you back. Only the word of the Lord of our God can pay you. And that greater peace is when you become the chastisement. The daily disciple of the word. The Musar, the training. That which has begun in Deuteronomy chapter 4 being replaced, the Lamad work. The same thing in the present Christendom, the work which has been given for us to do in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. To make them disciples is been replaced by weekly programs which is no way at all related to the church. This has been man-made programs. And why we have been given that? Because whenever we reason, our word should lack. And what we reason, we reason with wisdom, says Proverbs 11.30. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord of our God, understanding His word and walking according to His truth is our wisdom. And that may seem foolishness to these people, but that foolishness is far greater than the wisdom of this world, where they are seeking in search of their righteousness to gain the salvation of the Lord. So the th three things in Acts 24.25, an apostle Paul reasoned the fact pertaining to righteousness, the first one, Dikaya Sune, and then about the temperance, which is so much essential for us, Akratia, which is nothing but the virtue of one who masters his desires and passions, especially sensual appetites, which is nothing but self-control. This Akratia, and what is that self-control? The way how Eunuch went along. When Philip, he met on the way. He had to go and give sacrifice to the Lord. But he self-controlled and, turn, and turned from there. And he said, there is no more any meaning for me to go and do the dead rituals. Because Christ has paid me for full on the cross. I baptize over here in the water and take the responsibility of him upon my shoulders and march ahead. That's self-control. Matthew 4, 7, great example of self-control. The sinners only tempt the Lord. But Christ, our Lord of God, in his essence says, he cannot tempt the Lord. 
The self-control is a resultant of whatever Lord of God says with men it is impossible, but with Lord of God all things are possible. It's self-control. Morning by morning you need to come to Bible class no matter what it is, even there is a death in your life of your family. Come back, self-control. That's what he preached to Ezekiel's wife. And giving an instruction to Ezekiel about the death of his wife, the beauty of the soul of his eyes. You shall not weep, self-control. What worth they have. Without taking the great discipline in the word of the Lord of God and you think your loved ones are dead, it is better for you to happy to be happy than to weep at their death and lament at their death. Do you know why? A cup of consolation of water is not needed for them, those who don't obey the word of the Lord of God, because they have made in anthropomorphical terms to grieve and squelch and deceive and wax let God the Holy Spirit ample than what you think you lost your love of your century, what you think you lost your soulmate, what you think you lost your parents or a beloved one. They have grieved a lot. That's why Lord God makes them to take sin unto death. The reason why He makes them sin unto death after giving warning discipline, after giving intensified stage of discipline, because they will not change. Therefore, He said to Jeremiah, Pray not for these people, I will not hear you. Though Moses and Samuel could stand, I will not hear them, because such is the hardness of their hearts. They have failed to nagad the word of the Lord of God. They have failed to teach and make to win souls. Lakak, to seize off by every word what they speak, of by every word what they talk, being seasoned with salt, for which cause I have called them to be in my glory. Do you know what is this, dear brethren, we are talking about? The life which you are going through is so great and unique. Wise is the man who winneth souls. How can he win the soul? The Hebrew word winneth soul is not a competition for you. It's a word called as lakak. The example what we read between Enoch and the walk before the Lord. When he walked before the Lord of God, he pleased the Lord so that he took him off. The word took is again lakak. Seized him off so that he can want to marry him because he has become his possession and property. Likewise, when you open up your mouth before unbelievers, the way how your phallus trembled, the way how their Agrippa says, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. And Paul says, not only you, but everyone who are here, who have learned to me, or have risen to me, they also should be like Christians. That's like act, dear brother. But looking upon our walk of life, how many people are like act? To the word of the Lord of our God, to the serious discipline of Bible doctrine, to come every day and carry up their cross and follow my Christ. How many people? Since you do not know the purpose of which you have been kept alive on this earth, then how can you make others to believe in my Christ? How can you make others to come back and follow the Lord? Don't you have the self-control to teach every day Bible doctrine? Don't you have the self-control to make up your mind to read the word from the original language of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and come back and teach with proper dispensing technique of dispensations and make up number one priority for the word of the Lord of our God? Don't you have that self-control to teach the truth? Rather than inculcating yourself into the standards of this work, what the churches are running through, dancing, jumping and talking into the tongues, pertaining called as tongues, in a very, very disorderly manner, when you have self-control in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, grieving him not, squelching him not, vexing him not, deceiving him not, then certainly he will make you to cleanse the garbage that is there in your soul. The garbage which is so much great in our pulpits today, which has been filled with the filth. Do you know what I could say for you as an example? In my country, India, if you go to a mutton shop where they sell the mutton, they all make up in a small, small sheds nearby houses. It's not that they have a big market for it. So near these houses, a small cat or a dog which is surviving, it will be very happy because it thinks it has been born in the midst of a raw meat to gather because whenever they throw the waste of that meat while cleansing it out, the cat or the animal would think or the dog would think, how blessed I am to be born in the midst of this hut or nearby to the houses where this hut has been kept as a mutton shop and they are selling the meat. How blessed I am. Do you know why does it think that? Because it is getting every day its meat to eat. 
and the other cats which are far away or the dogs which are far away from that small hut from where they are selling that meat they would think how blessed is that cat it is born there it is getting every day the meat and they would feel jealousy of that cat isn't it <laughs> maybe the animals may not feel but we are we as human beings as animals we do feel jealousy when another one is growing up and if the other one is growing up in the word of the lord of our god you would rather not feel jealousy but you know what you will be like christ in philippians 2:6 he says though he was god he did not think equally to be like god but he suffered like an anthropos so it would be for us we would not feel jealousy when the other one is growing up in the word of the lord of god because we know the burden to become disciple the word of the lord of god is a very tough task and we would rather encourage him rather than feeling jealousy that is growing up in grace and in the truth of the word of the lord and since we have the sperm of christ we don't even think like christ neither we have our self control like christ so coming back to the example dear brethren if the cat which has been born near that hut where it can get that meat do you not think christ our lord our god prayed for us every day in eternity past to provide for us our spiritual manna spiritual meat and yet when we come to give you solid food solid meat you have not even drunk the sincere milk and you have been still unskilled says hebrews 5:13 unskilled inexperienced in the righteousness of the word of the lord of our god though you are a believer in christ you have the absolute standards of righteousness but growing up in the god like righteousness or the usobian type of righteousness you are still unskillful inexperienced that's why you malign you gossip you judge you neglect to come every day bible doctrine and you come weekly ones you make monthly ones for you to think the tithe of your income is great enough then making your every day tithe of your time to the word of the lord of our god and though christ our lord of our god has paid for us and prayed for us in full that we shall be his disciples that we shall be like his disciples we shall carry his cross and follow him every day Though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us, yet what we do? We are not worried that we have been born in the church age with a great spiritual meat our given for us. And every day with a certain portion of a rate, our Lord our God would bestow upon us this meat. And therefore we ask you every time, whenever you come every day to Bible class, sanctify yourselves and look upon the pale wonders of the word of the lord of our god that has been reserved and kept for us today in eternity past which is due for us at the weekly time it is the time for the religion crowds to come out who think they can work out their own salvation by the deeds of a good one absolute standards of righteousness they think they can do it they think they can get it they think they can consider it with the works of their own righteousness they can think it of they can do it but not at all they can never do it they can never think of it but it's day by day process for a christian believer in this church age to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine without growing up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine never we can think what is needed for us in the church age to be taught for all now i can think what to be thought for what the mind of christ thinks for him to think but he can never think that because what is been thought and given for us in the mind of christ demands day by day growing up in the word he fails the breathing process of daily growing up in the grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine he fails in that process but what do we find the cat cowl that cat which is near that shut near that shed of that mutton shop to be blessed because it gets every day at least raw meat because in my country india every day they cut the butcher the things pertaining to the animals the fish or animals or whatever it could be so every day it will get but the people over here they are not interested to lackack by taking in the word of the lord of our god and get every day the right word the right truth in our pulpits and enjoy the true calling of my christ enjoy the true work of my christ enjoy the great work of the lord the replace it with lies 
by saying weekly once is enough for us. How can you become kakma? How can you become wisdom? How can you lakak? Without getting in daily, maturing in the word of the Lord of our God, how can you lakak? Therefore, he uses the word self-control, akratia, and the judgment which is going to come, krema, which is nothing but a decree, which is nothing but a condemnation, which is nothing but a damnation, dear brethren, krema. You know what is this krema? Where many people don't understand this krema at the present terms. At the judgment seat of Christ, when they wake up, the truth, what they have to communicate, they haven't communicated. But it will be a tough time for them, says James 3, 1. Severe judgment for them. A great megalas, the word megakrima. Because they haven't done what is the will of Lord God the Father in heaven. They haven't given them the root cause for peace is to become the disciple of the word of the Lord of our God. Hebrews 12, 5 through 8 or 5 through 11. The word is so specific. If you have been loved by the Lord of our God, then you will go for daily disciple. Because when you are coming to daily discipleship program, he must as he whips you out. To see and to test and to test and to cross check whether you will come every day in spite of there is any mannerism of whip or temptation which cannot lead you above than what you cannot tempt or you cannot control your temptation. But he's going to test you so that you can come back and give number one priority for the word of the Lord of our God, no matter whatever it is. No matter what. And happy are they there who find this bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in the midst of that world, in the midst of their own thinking, in the midst of their own mannerism of their life which they are leading. Happy are they who find in the midst of the schedule of their life. Such bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers who could train you up every day, no matter what time it is. If needed morning 4.30 to start the class. If needed morning 3.30 to start the class and to give them doctrine, fulfilling Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. Teaching them a great word every day. Happy are they who find such pastors. Like the way how that cat could be born near the shop of that mutton one. Near that shed. Seeking and searching the truth is the will of Lord God the Father for you so that you can go back and look and desire what is the truth because you have a severe judgment before you. Krema. That severe judgment which is so much essential for us to face through. Without that severe judgment to examine ourselves day by day we cannot partake in the elements of the Lord. We cannot partake in learning the word of the Lord of a God. 1 John 1 9, there, first, there, first Corinthians 11 30 and 31. That's what taking in the partaking elements of the Lord. For everything, there is a time for you to judge yourself and involve in it. Pause a second and look what is your life. Every breath is it glorifying the Lord. Moment by moment, are you giving the rega back an examination of the Lord? Zephaniah 3 4 and 5. Are you becoming a pastor teacher who is violating the law of the Lord of a God or becoming a blasphemer? But remember, dear brethren, Lakak, to seize off the soul of the unbeliever by telling to him the truth. Like the way how Felix over here trembled at the truth. The righteousness, number one. Number two, when he's going to discourse about the self-control. Taking them to their mind to realize it is no longer the dead works. When Christ our Lord of God talks a lot of things in Jeremiah 16 and 17 teaching to us the spiritual adultery what they commanded and he says for us the spiritual adultery is nothing but the duplication of doctrine what they have practiced which they have delineated for their own self. It is not by the name of Yahweh which is a gift of revolution but it is by their own myths and mythologies what they have copied and they are giving to you to kill off your first son and daughter to give as a human to give as a living sacrifice or a human sacrifice burning them all these things. What does he say? Why he goes against the idols because they are 
no doctrine because there is no truth there is a stock of vanities he says for us because the truth is in me the word of the lord our god come back and learn he is idolizing the things talking to idols but he is telling in return the doctrine of the idols is not for us and the doctrine of the idols is what Ephesians 4 17 Apostle Paul says this is what I witness and ask you not to walk in the vanities of the Gentiles of their mind the way how they walk in the vanity of their thinking because they lead you out from the truth here the idols represent false teachings there the Gentiles believe false teachings but we have to be renovated in the standards of our thinking after the mannerism of Christ there is no excuse if you don't learn the word of the Lord of a God. That's what he meant to say. There is no excuse if you don't fear for the word of the Lord of a God. There is no excuse for you if you don't love to realize what is this great word of the Lord of a God at least. Therefore many are weak, sick and till to the point of death says the scripture. You partake the elements without having any purpose for you so that you know not why you partake in those elements till Christ could come. You could certainly make known the work of crucifixion, the work of incarnation, the work of resurrection to these unbelievers so that Proverbs 11 30 says for us, you who are winning souls, Lakak the Nepesh, they are wise. And why we partake in the elements of the Lord? Just for some ritual, the only ritual given for us in the church to be performed? No, not at all. You partake in the elements of the Lord of our God every day to remind you what is the purpose of it. There is no excuse for it. If you fail to take the partake elements of the Lord, you know why? Every day you need to be mindful. Every day you need to be thinking and you need to be waiting for the one who would come without knowing Christ by your deed at least, by your work at least, by your holiness at least, by your act of deed at least, they should come to know and realize what is the truth. And believe my Christ like the way how the unquestionable deeds what Mother Teresa did to this country, India. They worshipped her as God. That's the blind faith in my country, India, pertaining to anyone who does good. They worship and consider him as gods. But Christ our Lord our God said, to whom the word of the Lord our God has been given, they are gods to this world. <laughs> the office of us to represent the work of Godship doctrine. But what are we doing? No Nagad exposition of the word, isn't it? Why? No proper instruction given for you. That's why. The entertaining clones, the kleptes, the lustes, the misthotes, the tupas, the canapes, the tiflos, and the sheruras when they occupy the pulpits, what instructions they can give to you. That's why we have a great things for us to learn in the, from the book of Jeremiah. In chapter 17, from verse number 13, we shall continue that after this prayer. Confession of our sins through repent. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the wonders of the word of the Lord of our God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we go share these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. And we find over here, particularly, in Jeremiah 17, in verse number 13, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. Number one, forsake. What they do shall be ashamed. Bush, the Hebrew word. It is to put to shame. But these people are not shameful. What they have done, they have forsaken. Azab. They have let it to apostatize. By not making them disciples, they are forsaken. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. Though they die sinner to death, they are not interested to come back and to put number one priority for the infallible and inherent word of the Lord of our God to be all this. Number one. Though they are revolting against the Lord, and they can find on the other hand, that there are people dying sin unto death, yet they have not come back to the living water of the Lord of a God, that is the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Though they have been written in the earth, by that we meant to say the death, Eretus, since they have forsaken again the Lord, the fountain of the living water, 
that which is always alive and powerful. The fountain is Makkah, the source of life, joy, purification, the source of our eyesight, the source of the things of blood to flow. It has been used happiness, wisdom, the progeny word, the fountain, the issue, the spring. The forgot the source, the fountain, which is nothing but Makar, Makar, Makore. And then he, Jeremiah comes, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. Since you alone are the reason for my praise. Since you alone are the reason of my praise. But we are not interested nowadays to look upon what is Rafa, to be healthful. We have not interest to look what is Yasha, the salvation. And he says, Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now to pass. The present contemporary people who are there with me in the church age, in the present time, they would always ask the same question to me. Where is the word of the Lord of our God? Let it come to pass. The teachings, what you're teaching every day, where it is. The teachings, what we say for you to come back and put number one priority for Bible doctrine. And they say, where it is, let it come to pass. <coughs> it will be better for us to be alone than to be in a bad company. Because here a word, Apostle, here a word Jeremiah says for us, which is so shocking to look. Because it says, as far as for me, or as far as myself, I have not hastened woods to be pressed, or to confine, to urge, or to insist, or to hasten from being a pastor again, ra'a, which is to grace, to, to feed them with the pasture. The right work of the pastor teacher is to feed the word of the Lord of God. I have not hastened from a pastor to follow thee or being a pastor to follow thee. Again, the word follow is akar, which is nothing but always to be the standards of Lord's teaching, how they have to be after his manner. His will and plan is always to make disciples. Therefore, in the greatest commission given for us in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, he takes us again to teach to make them disciples, akar. So, from being a pastor to follow thee, that is what following whom? Christ, not the man, not the standards of man. That's what he says in Galatians 1, 10 and 11. If I were here to please man, I wouldn't have been the bond slave of the Lord. Therefore, I certify in verse number 11 and 12, the teachings what I have, they have not been by men, not taught by men, nor they have been given by any other angels, but it is the revolution of Lord God, the Holy Spirit for me. Christ will reveal these things to me. It is not according to the traditions of man. That's the problem with us in the present Christendom. These people don't learn what is the truth. They love to think and talk about what is lies. Therefore, he says, I have been a pastor to follow thee, not the man, not the people, not the teachings of denominations. Not the teachings of the way how they would go back and say, if I am not in the supporting denomination terms for this Church of Christ or Pentecostals or any other movement, I will not get my salary. No. We support over here what is the word of the Lord of God. That's it. Because tomorrow, according to the word of the Lord of God, we are going to face the judgment of fire. The fire represents the word. If you have failed to dig the word from the original language of the scriptures, then it's your fault. It's your problem. He's going to judge you what the word says in the original language of the scriptures. <coughs> Therefore, Isaiah 53 5 teaches for us the chastisement which was upon our Lord of our God for our peace. The peace that we enjoy, the greater joy, what we enjoy when we do the good will and the good pleasure of the Lord of our God. For that cause, He has endured that chastisement. Therefore, He demands us to become His disciples, says Hebrews 12 6. And for that cause, when you're coming every day to learn the discipleship program, He must think as He will test you, but not beyond your temptation, what you cannot endure, but what you can endure is going to test you in those limits. And in Christ, we have to form our life because we have the sperm of Christ. As He chastened His own Son, 
because of the joy that has been kept before him that is you and me he endured the cross so it is for us because of the glory of the lord of a god that which he has given for us which we need to guard and we need to protect we have to endure this tribulation we have to endure these trials tribulation in the sense not the seven years because there are morons again who think tribulation meant to say the seven years period no the trials and the temptations which you go through the sufferings which you go through Therefore, we need to look upon these standards, what the word says for us. How to endure because of the Lord's glory that has been kept before us on this earth. Apart from Christ, we, have, we don't have anything else on this earth to be chosen for. Apart from the mentoring ministry to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that we can think we can walk off. The great problem with our standards of teachings today no reason as such why they have become the pastors. No reason as such why they have been called to become the shepherds. They think they can organize some organizations leading them to have a youth of people, a bunch of idiots who come there to think that they are also able to perform the work of idiotship because they have boy crazy, girl crazy and they make them to sing and dance and they make them to jump and shout. <coughs> and they think they have a vision of the Lord. They don't have the vision of the Lord God at all. They have the vision of this earth. Whom to marry, how to marry in the boy crazy, girl crazy standards. And they say, we are the regen. Or regenerated people again. You are not regenerated people at all. You are regenerated people for Satan and for the works of Satan. What is the main purpose of the church? Church is the university, the pastor, teacher is the dean and every believer is a professor to the angels. That's what Apostle Paul believed and thought for us. That's what Apostle Paul teaches for us that he is immortal till the work of my Christ could be done because he has taken the chastisement of the Lord, the discipline process. Therefore, he says in Colossians 1, 24-29, at least little part of the role what I have to pay to the church. The mental agony sufferings of my Christ, not the vicarious sufferings of the Lord. At least a little part of his role in the mental sufferings of my Christ. You know what a great privilege it is for us. What a great things we have in the Lord. Have you ever known about it? And yet they follow the crowds rather than the word of the Lord of a God. And they follow the people where they think giving tithe is more important than giving the time of the tithe every day to the word of the Lord of a God. Minimum two hours, 40 minutes. Rob it from the Lord, you see what will be your fate. Now you may think you may escape because you are able to enjoy a good diet, a good humanity or a good health. And Lord God has not stricken you with any such kind of things. Remember it's purely because of your parents who has worked earlier than you. The same thing what he did in the term pertaining to Methuselah. Lord God took him for 365 years, then he paid back 969 years, the longest life in the Bible. And he paid back the 65, he paid back one more year, added 301, 301, 301. And plus one more year as grace. Likewise, for his son Christ, who has given for him this third title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the church, for his 33 years, he's going to give 33 into thrice, 99 plus one year as a grace, 100 years for every believer. In spite of spending your time in this 100 years to grow up in grace from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, you end up dying sin unto death. Why? Because you don't love the word. And though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us, you say, No, Lord, I cannot be there because I don't love the word any longer. Because the word hasn't helped you, because the word hasn't taught you, because the word hasn't taught you about the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of a God. And isn't it a great shame for us that you don't trust the word and you love to trust the teachings of this man? Not falling according to the order of the Lord of a God, but falling according to the order of the world. Bible doctrine is very clear for us make disciples. The two verses of Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 in comparison to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 21 and 22 as well. Put off the new man, put on the new man. Manthano plus Didasco. The teachings of the word of the Lord of God again and again to be renovated. Making them great disciples is the true burden of every believer in Christ. 
the way how the false pastor teachers have entertained the pulpits have led them not to believe the truth neither to understand the truth neither to consider what is the truth they are so happy in their lives thinking that they don't have any further judgment in the lord what they have done is great anyone who doesn't honor his word according to his terms they have been called as workers of iniquity tempering you with untempered mortar or dobering you with untempered mortar but the rain the wind the storm comes what happens it will fall down it will not stand isn't it a shame for us to look when this man they have to be the communicators of the word of the lord of god in this church age looking upon the time they require at someone to teach them false things they require someone even to teach the lies of this world therefore they don't drink the sincere milk they opt itching ear pastors who teach them lies they don't want to endure sound bible doctrine but remember what jeremiah says in chapter number 17 for us i have not hesitated to become or hasten to become a pastor to follow after thee neither i have desired the woeful day he calls the woeful day desired ava to pass down the examination which has been kept which is so long a wish what is it the woeful day anash the sick day the weak day the frail day why the pastors fail to come and teach every day they say either they are weak either they are sick either they are frail they win they want to rest in the six days and they want to come and teach the seventh day because they have a lot of sermons for them on the seventh day the woeful day is for them who are walking contrary to the will of lord god the father and it is been used to be called as an incurable sickness and what we call dave the fox's way because their hearts have been faint with menstrual sickness what a word it is used by the lord of a god to teach us when apostle when jeremiah teaches to us the prophet i have not desired the woeful day and why he is saying that he is not desiring such woeful day a day of incurable sickness a day of great sickness which is desperately wicked which is very very sick not even a day to be sick do you know why because day by day he does the same work he goes to preach the word and while he goes to preach the word dear brethren the word says that which came out of my lips was before thee all the time and the word meant to say was after thee because it is thy word what we talk when we open up our mouth the kjv what it calls right over here it doesn't have in the original hebrew it is not the word was right before thee not at all it is before thee that's it it is thy word therefore the right work of the pastor teacher in representing the bona fide gift of him the office of him is to teach and in teaching what he is doing is representing the lord for example to tell you simply if you have your kid do you feed that kid with the broken milk the milk which is not correct or you feed with unhygienic food not at all right you love to give him the best you love to give him the great, great one right likewise the very word what you speak in the presence of the lord of a god representing god the father i got the son and got the holy spirit as a pastor teacher we love to give to you always the best going in detail in depth giving you the great standards of teaching so that you can realize and come back and lack hack every soul that is going after the mannerism of this world and getting them back to christ by believing them doing the ministry of reconciliation for which cause you have been called to be the ambassador for the lord lack hack them and get back that's your wisdom that's why we have been called the witness is truth he says in isa 43 to well again as well you are my witnesses in 4310 you are my witnesses let them come and reason 439 then they shall know this is truth the all world together when they produce their sound arguments 
because I, I, I alone am Yahweh El Elyon Elohim before me there was none be after me there will be none I am the only one before the daylight could form I am the only one that's what he meant to say the witnesses for the truth so the sole reason when you make up the disciples when you teach them and make them disciples so that they can go back and win these unbelievers it meant to say the very word what you speak it has to be the Lord's word we can find in the KJV the word being italics, right, which has not been found in the original Hebrew text. It says, it is before thee. The very word what I spoke, it is before thee. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, I, I certify to the very word, every word what I preach. And I call God as my witnesses that the truth is in me. Can you certify your standards of teachings? Can you certify your ministries, what you have started, is in the foundation of the word of the Lord of God or is it away from the foundation of the word of the Lord of God? Can you certify your teachings? There is no need to answer to me. I am not a judge for you. The cream of judgment has been waiting for you at the judgment seat of Christ. Be aware. When Felix understood about the self-control, when Felix understood about the righteousness of the Lord, when Felix understood about the judgment of the Lord which is going to come, he trembled. Remember that word. That is the work of every believer to teach. Not to see that they are afraid and coming back to my Christ. No. Teaching them the real faith. Luke chapter 16 between the rich man and Lazarus is not a, a way of parable eh, for you to think that it has been just an imaginative story. Not at all. It is a fact. The very word what our Lord of God spoke on this earth was a fact. While his living word on this earth, it was a fact. There is no need for him to give the things pertaining to you and to say such and such allegory for it. No, like the way the four departments for sowing of the seed of the word of the Lord of God. That's an allegory for it to teach. But this point over here between the rich man and Lazarus is not an allegory, but it's a fact. Is illustrating for us what is the truth when we fail to believe in Christ. He's illustrating for us that they wish the word of the Lord of God, the prophets of Moses, and they have the work of the Moses, believe them. And even though there is a man who could come back from death into life, even they will not believe. That's what the fact about my Christ, the man who resurrected, yet they doubt his resurrection. And now we are here to represent my Christ and say, we walk by faith and not by sight. We say over here the way how our Lord of our God said to Thomas, the happy are they, they, they believe in me by not looking, but rather just by blind faith. Because we have greater rewards for us. Because we don't tempt the Lord of our God again and again to teach or to say. But we say, Lord, yes, thy word be done forever. Warn to them that they are waiting for the woeful day, anash day. But he says, neither have desired the woeful day. Because I have not hesitated or hastened to be a pastor following thee. Therefore, every day he was free from sickness, he was free from weakness, he was free from fail frailness. Every day he came to teach. And he says, though knowest, that is, Yada, you know very well, O Lord, what I am, that which came out of my mouth, or going out from the things pertaining to my mouth, that were from my lips, the language, the speech, everything pertaining to the word of the Lord of our God, which is binding, was before thee. And the Hebrew word right is not been found was before thee and then he says be not a terror unto me Mekita to destruction because you are my hope in the day of evil because the people now they're asking where is the word what you're teaching is right the same thing even in my case where you preach in an open field no hearers yet the angels followed by those who listen to my word they are my hearers so in the day of evil what we are going through the evil apostasy where they haven't made daily to teach the word of the Lord of God as number one priority daily to give the word of the Lord of God as number one priority 
they would ask where is thy fruitful ministry show forth for us so here Jeremiah says do not make me as a reproach in the day of evil because you are my hope and the hope meant to say Makesh refuge shelter from falsehood let them be confounded that persecute me let them have their bush that persecute me but let not be confounded let them be dismayed but let not be be dismayed again chata to be shattered to be broken but let not me be dismayed bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction crushing the word shebron meant to say make or break them with double breach and thus said the lord unto me go and stand in the gate of the children of the people whereby the kings of judah come in and by the which they go out and in all the gates of jerusalem and say unto them hear you the word of the lord you kings of judah and all the judah and all the inhabitants of jerusalem that enter in by these gates thus said the lord take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the sabbath day now bring it upon by the gates of jerusalem neither carry forth a burden out of your horses on a sabbath day neither do you any work but hollow you the sabbath day as i commanded your fathers but they obeyed not neither inclined their ear but made their neck stiff hardened that they might not hear nor receive instruction that's the introduction to a word called as musa why he is asking about the sabbath day to keep it as whole hollow every day is a day for us in the presence of the lord of god to go and learn doctrine why is a day of a sabbat or a hollow day because they should once again renovate the standards of the thinking pertaining to the word of the lord of god but they are failing not giving the time to renovate the standards of the thinking the church age being having the intense first stage of the angelic conflict demands it is not just one day of the sabbat that you come but it is every day breath by breath to renovate the standards of your thinking by paying the tithe of your time making hollow the only ritual given for us in the church age being mindful about the proclamation about my christ incarnation resurrection and crucifixion on this earth but they fail to hollow but here we find they obeyed not that's always there always shamma to hear and not to obey neither inclined that is what nata to stretch out to spread out in search of it their ear the ear get aqua o is been not heard by the mind of the thinking but made their neck which has been required for us to turn either to the left or to the right so the neck of them is been into the apostasy and what did they make they make it as a stiff hardened they are not able to move either this or way they have made it to be stiff hardened only to consider to pollute the hollow day the same thing what we are able to look today they are considering to have a stiff necked pollution which is nothing but not to come and become the disciples of the world and that's what they are able to find today in our pulpits it is a stiff hardened neck not to come every day to carry their cross and follow my christ by becoming his disciple and why did they make their neck stiff hardened because they might not hear again once again shamma to hear and obey neither receive that is what lakak again the word what we find over here lakak to fetch to acquire to take away to snatch what instruction which is nothing but musa the chastisement which our lord of god took on our behalf of isa 53:5 the same word musar so by the way what is this word musar musar is nothing but chastisement or punishment or correction or discipline or instruction or self control because it is a bond a checking a restraint that is the correction process which results in education deuteronomy 11:2 in comparison to deuteronomy 4:35 this musar is very frequently used in proverbs and often it is an oral discipline not a corporal discipline thus this musar was been developed by the 
prophets in the place of God's discipline. So he says in Isaiah 8, 11, in comparison to Isaiah 53, 5, that's the favorite words, what we are talking about, to make them disciples. Because if you want to have a good pleasure of the Lord of God to be performed in your life, then definitely you have to become the disciple, the chastisement of the word. So the same concept in Jeremiah 2, 30, 5, 3, 7, 28, 17, 23, and 32, 33. And Hosea 5, 2, as well as 7, 12, the, more, the word Musar, which is the theme for them to teach. Therefore, the chastisement of our part is being taken upon Christ. And that's what it has to be, dear brethren. This chastisement was being taken of our peace was upon the Lord of our God because of one great reason we need to do the goodwill and the good pleasure of the Lord. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to know in Isaiah 8, 11, which is very nearby for the word called as Yasar instruction. Therefore, what does it mean to say for us? Reproof being instructed and it always has the physical enforcement followed by a verbal re refinement or reinforcement the two things number one physical enforcement or verbal reinforcement what is the physical if you would have to have your evolution to be positive taking up your collar and grabbing you and making you to sit in the bible class that is physical enforcement but at the same time verbal reinforcement which is the mentality of your thinking to be changed when we teach with proper instruction as it was in the case of Isaiah chapter 8 when it was been said the Lord God alone is your tremble that is what he is your fear and he is your dread so have a trembling for him and make disciples instruct the law in these disciples therefore one becomes educated when the proper amount of training and correctness are being imposed proper amount of training is lacking in our pulpits that's why we find many so-called denominational churches which are not at all close enough even to be called exegeomai denominations. So the purpose of Lord Jesus Christ in discipline is always reformation. Man must learn from this mighty acts of Yasar and Lord's discipline tests his children all the time. And why the Lord of God tests his children all the time? Because it is Yahweh the God the Father who is for us and he disciplines as a father would discipline his children, his child, says Hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 through 11. Therefore, it is a great relationship of his love towards us. And therefore, the always term developed by the prophets was this word Musar. And Lord God took this chastisement on our behalf so that now we could become his disciple and we can truly enjoy the great peace which has been designed for us in eternity past by Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to look what is this great discipleship program which is nothing but daily carrying your cross and following my Christ to become his word. And there Jeremiah says in chapter number 17, he hastened not neither he desired the woeful day anash the sick day the incurable sickness the frail day the weakness day why because he knew very well the very word what he's talking is before the lord and it is always perfect before the lord because he knew very well he was the mouth of the lord the lips were been given by the lord of a god to teach the truth therefore the same work for the pastor teacher when he's been given as a teacher work to represent the lord of a god and how does he represent by faithful preparation of the word day by day daily preparing for the, for, for the word of the Lord of God from the original language of the scriptures and whenever opening the mouth is representing the Lord is not into the facets or the details of this life which could make him to be pleased because the many men on this earth who do not have this bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church who enter into a pulpit are happy enough to please men and not our Lord of God thus their system of thinking is been absolutely corrupted into the work of the Lord so what do they do they are so much happy to develop their own concepts of denominations their own concepts of teachings weekly ones they are interested to come monthly ones for the times pertaining to the Lord's Supper including the things pertaining to which we call as tithes monthly ones but we are not coming for the tithe of money at all in the church age we neither interest to talk about money in the terms pertaining to the glorious gift of the lord of our god we love to come and ask you to give every day the tithe of your time to become the disciple of the lord if not dear brethren take it granted the woeful day of the lord of our god is at every breath of your life therefore many are weak sick until to the point of death the sickness is what you get to come and to teach every day the word of the lord of God is incurable.
That's the sickness which is not going to strengthen you up. That's why you become frail. But Apostle Paul says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. He's talking about the weakness that is not depending upon the flesh any longer, but is depending only upon the spirit. Therefore, he says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And what is that spirit? The controlling power, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit given for us. The same thing what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had. It was on the same apostles. It was now upon us. It resides in us. Therefore, grieve not, squelch not, wax not, deceive not the indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, peripatao, by being filled in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is plera, or not speaking in tongues, but being controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to cleanse the garbage that is there in your soul as the fish fill the nets. Therefore, it is not just to peripata or walk, but it demands to march. So I can in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. We have something great for us in the church age. The people of the past dispensation can never know about it. The people of the future dispensation can never learn about it. But we have right now in the church age. That's why we have been called to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. The greater you grieve and squelch and deceive Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the greater your life, which ends up into the reality of this earth, which is nothing but... Those who haven't believed the word, they are into the dust, says the word. The choice men becoming a prey for pestilence, for mine. Why? Because they don't have doctrine in them. That's why. If you love the word and to if you love the word of the Lord of our God and to love to honor his word, you will have greater life. But your lifespan has been cut off. The sole reason being because you don't love to walk with the Lord. Though. So how can you lack the souls of the unbelievers? Dear brethren, they received not the instruction of the Lord. So Felix trembled. Ginomai became, which has appeared in history for our admonition. What we fail to do and what we fail to teach becomes a ginomai. But what we teach also becomes no reason to make known. He has made known through his son. He is making known through the Holy Spirit of the Lord of God working in prophets and apostles in the completed canon of scripture. Now he is making known through the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers. And even after our departure he makes known till the rapture of the church. So Felix trembled and answered Apocrinomai to give an answer, to give a to give to begin to speak, to respond, saying to the point, Go thy way, for this time when I have a convenient season I will call for thee. Why did he say go thy way? Paruomai to lead over, to carry over, to transfer, to lead over into orders to one's life. Because this time the present one because when I have convenient season Kairos time I will call Matakaleo to call from one place to another to call to self you because he was not having a heart to really take in the righteousness the temperance and the judgment which caused him to tremble which caused him to always look for amphobas thrown into fear, terrified and trembled. So we shall make it productive for you. If you are not winning souls, lakak souls, then it's purely because you haven't got the right instruction to know what is the purpose of you to believe in Christ after this salvation from the day when you believed in the Lord. After salvation, it is for you to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, breath by breath. After salvation, it is for you to come back and do the will of Lord God the Father in heaven. And which is nothing but to grow up in grace. That's what he says even in 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18, to be aware. You are not ignorant about the facts. Or you can think which has been hidden from them. But you have all the things for you readily in advance in Christ. The greater the time you fail to win souls, the greater your wisdom of this world shows. 
that you're always going global. Jeremia, hasten not to follow after my Christ, because he did not desire the woeful day. But many pastors today were desiring the woeful day. Are hastening not to follow my Christ, but they are following after the world. Therefore, their believers who listen to their doctrine are not lacking, are not making to win souls. Though by default we are ambassadors to the Lord, though by default we have been called to the ministry of reconciliation, not only just ambassadors but to become the missionaries into full-time ministry, not only just missionaries to become an apologetics as well, to teach and to preach the word accurately, by defending the doctrine of Christ, Yet, looking upon the time, you need someone still to give you basic fundamentals. Because you haven't loved the sincere word, the word of the Lord of a God, which is the only revelation given for the sinful mankind, whereby by believing upon it, you shall be saved. Dear brethren, rather getting into fear, thrown into fear or terrified, wake up and look the truth. The truth can set you free. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Learning the truth so that the truth can set you free. Whether there may be years or four years, our duty is to teach. We shall do it. Today also there is some wind disturbance, yet listen to the word. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be returning to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal life. By faith alone, in Christ alone, not by works, not by gimmicks. Remember the thief on the cross who did not have time to come back. By faith alone, in Christ alone, he was been saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess not the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Lakan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond of my witnesses where they have been called. And a moment I'm out of my witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And I'm out of diamond my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature. The entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely, divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to understand the word as you have said. Neither have I desired the woeful day, the Hebrew word Anash, which meant to say for us not to be sickened, not to be having that incurable sickness in the Kamnov area of their mind. But day by day, coming to be in the strength of your vigor and valor of your power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the word. And not to be frail enough, but rather coming in authority to teach the word in representing thee. Because every word what we speak is before thee, O Lord. Father, help us to do thy will accurately, to open up our mouth in thy truth. And see if there is an offense away in us, O Lord. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ, much less pure, less gracious name we pray, Father. We thank you for us to give the information that we have to lakak the unbelievers to believe in my Christ, provided when we have the wisdom of the word running in us, the burden of the love, for which cause you have sent your dear beloved Son for us, for which reason he has saved us, likewise for the prayer he prayed in John chapter 17. Those who hear a word, even they also should come, but, that they, but first they should hear our word, so prepare us, O Lord, to teach the word. Faithfully, like our kingdom, for thy glory. In Christ, much less, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. May that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. Amen.